Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Good day everyone. Today on the bench I'm going to tie you up a uh, Fakahatchee Special, I believe was what it was called. I picked this fly up in a big box store in Florida when I was heading down there fishing the uh, Everglades and the 10,000 Islands area and uh, I fish uh, an area called Fakachi so I figured well let's pick up a few and give them a try. They do work, work well. Um, the nice thing about tying your own flies is you can trick them out, tie them a little different. This is the one I bought in the store, it's a little beat up, quite beat up actually, but you can see how the, uh, the rabbit is lashed on there, there's no weed guard on it, the tail didn't Splay out the way I wanted it, but fair enough. It's it's had its fair share of snook on the end of it. It's a it's a good fly. So let's take that and uh, we'll try to improve it. I always take a vice with me when I'm traveling, and uh, sometimes you have to kind of compromise and make what you can with what you have. So it's kind of an example of that. We didn't have the the hooks with me, so I just picked up some big holder hooks. It was similar size to this and pinch the barbs all down on the shanks and so forth. Uh, bead chain couldn't find any of that so I go to the hardware section and picked up an armful of beads, bead chain. So let's go from there and, uh, and tie this fly. Here's the materials we need to tie it. We showed you the hook. Uh, basically a 1 aught or a 2 aught, about an 811S or something even longer would be fine. Um, the thread, I'm going to be using some uh, flat wax nylon. This is a Danville's 210 denier. It's, a, it's a good for large flies. Uh, I'm going to use some orange or red wire, small for my uh, wire brush. You notice I'm going to use a wire brush on this and not wrap the hide. Give me a much nicer fly. I'm going to be using some cross cut uh, rabbit for the body. The tail, we're going to be using uh, some black uh, crystal flash in there and also some gold holographic uh, tinsel for the accent. And I'm also going to add some little bit of this white chenille on there just for a ball so I can get a nice play on my tail. Gets a little more movement in the water. Anytime we can incorporate a little more movement, that's good. Uh, with the legs out the back, we want to use some Cree and also some Grizzly uh, hackle for the tips. Those are tied in back to back. I'll show you that in a second. So let's go get a hook on the vise. And also to finish that off, we want to use some Solar Reds. This is thin, hard fly tie resin. And you'll also want some dubbing, dubbing wax when you're doing your brush. So we'll get this hook in the vise. It's an offset hook. I'm going to straighten it so it travels nice and true. And also, I forgot to ask, mention too, I'm going to be using some real hard uh, 20 pound test monofilament for the um, weed guard. Something that's very, very important I found down there fishing mangroves and, and oyster bars and so forth for them. Snook want to hide out. There's lots it's snaggy so you want to make sure you're not hanging up. Okay we'll get our thread started on the shank here. Dress the whole shank. Some of you might not fish salt water but if, if any of you that do you'll be possibly interested in this fly. So I'd like to give you a little bit of a variety. We're just going to tie our bead chain eyes on the front. Just X them on. And then go underneath. And that tightens them right up. You can cement that on if you want, but they're pretty they're pretty solid right now. Okay, now in the rear. We uh, see the other the other tail on the original just basically stuck out the back. It really didn't do much. And I'm going to take a little ball of chenille at the back here and that'll help splay the tail and incorporates a little extra movement. 
bring some black crystal flash. Just need about three strands of that. And we're going to double it over. Uh, we can take, we can double it over right now, actually. Clip in half. Basically, a kind of an antenna-looking setup. That'll be good. It'll be super neat on these flies if you want. It only matters to me. It doesn't matter to the fish. And I'm just going to get my gold over the top. A little unruly, this stuff. Uh, because of it, it's got a little, seems like magnetism would roll it around in the box for a while and it wants to do whatever, it's got a mind of its own, as you can see. Once you get it in the water, here, I just put a little slive on there just to hold it back. That's what it's going to look like in the water. And it's okay if it's not totally straight at the back. Actually, I like it a little better that way. Okay, now we're going to come in, we have a Cree hackle and a grizzly hackle. Now we're going to take the dull sides facing each other. The way the original pattern had it, and it's basically you can see either side. You want to make sure these are married there together like that. Looks like one feather now. I go on each side of the chenille. Tie that on the sides. Do the same here. We grab another Cree and a Grizzly. If you don't have Cree, just go with Grizzly. Just use what you have. Sometimes you got to improvise. They tied the Cree on the inside for some reason. I don't know if that matters. I think it's more of a cockroach. Looking uh, set up here really is what it looks like to me, kind of like a cockroach on the tarpon flies. I've got to get this off. And get that hackle down to the side. There we go. There. A little pull back, it'll look good, but it'll want to flay out or splay on you too. Okay. So that, that's good right there. Take my hackle head. Now what I want to do here, I'm going to bring in some, you can put some head cement on. I'm just going to throw in a little bone dry solar res on here just in between by these hackles because basically all they're hanging on there by is that stem. Just sturdy that up a little bit more. Might as well take an extra minute on the vise and uh, that way you don't have to be breaking them off. And, Tying another one on when the fish is good. Okay, now I'll get my red wire. Original pattern, they just wrapped on a rabbit strip, but you can't get as much hair on there, it doesn't look near as good. Get a much nicer body with a dubbing brush. Throwing a half hitch. You don't have an Orvice, go to a dubbing block. You're going to get the same, same results. Okay, now we'll take some of our crosscut rabbit. So there's a lot of hide that you'd be wrap, trying to wrap around that shank and that little bit of shank you got. So what I do is cut it off the, the hide close as I can. Then I lay it just the butt ends over the thread. I can get more hair on my table. It breathes a lot better. This is a step that on so many I use so many wire brushes on flies. And uh, once you get onto it, if you haven't already, look into it. You can build small nymphs, really nice job, collars, dub bodies, hackling. Very, very durable too, and lots of movement. Get everything you want. 
Okay, now important thing when you're doing dubbing brushes, you want some dubbing wax or this all falls apart in this step. And I'm just going to put some wax on my on my wire. That'll just help everything stay in place there until you get it out of the uh, table. And I'll just turn slowly till I get it kind of started and then I can go a little faster. I'll get my brush or dubbing block or table out of the way for you. See there it's coming together nicely. I can spin I spin it till I can start feeling that wire shorten up and then wanting to turn in my hand then I know I got a good tight brush. I'm just going to go to the, to the end here now again and then we'll start wrapping it and I'm going to wrap this by hand because when I do that I can preen these hair back as I go and gives me a really nice even body it's not bulky but I got all the hair sticking right where I want it and I'll just tie off the excess here Excess. Make sure I get some good turns, tie that wire down, that's all good. Get a few hair that want to stick through on you. Just burn them off with a torch. You don't want to get too close to the thread, of course. Okay, now I can just figure eight this again around the eyes. I want to put a little red collar on there. I think it would even help a little too because I know snook like the red collars. So that would be another nice little add-on if you wanted to throw a little red um, hair in there or a flash of some sort. Don't overtake it though. I kind of leave this pattern kind of the way it is. It, it works good so I didn't really change too much of that. When you're tying though you can always trick a few out and see how they work. You can be the guy that dropped the peanut butter and the chocolate. Turned out to be a good idea, didn't it? So here you go. We're going to take some stiff um, leader material for your weed guard. And it's got a natural curve. And I'm just flattening, flattening this part of the, the mono with a flat plier and then I tie it in like so. It, on the one side I'm just taking it at 45 then I bring the top down it's a really easy way of doing these weed guards and then uh, go in behind go in behind and that's it that, hold that in place you can finish this right here tie it off another thing if you want to use red thread on there would be another plus Always nice when you tie your own flies. You can trick them out a little bit. There's a fly I think that when they sold it in this box, big box store, it was like eight bucks or nine bucks American, whatever they charge a lot of money for these some of these bugs, and you can even build them yourself. Not you can save some money doing it, but you can. My point is you can trick them out the way you want. Add the weed guard, for example. Without the weed guard, you're going to lose some flies. You want these, if you haven't fished snook, they're a lot of fun, but they're, uh, they're cagey. They're in there tight on those mangroves. And Put my epoxy on the head. Take my weed guard, trim that off just below the point. So, like say if you're running that along the oyster bars, fish like to hunt in there too for prey. And uh, there it is, Fakachi Special, and it, uh, it's been a good fly, but it produced uh, uh, very well for us. So, anyway, thanks for watching uh, On the Bench again. We'll catch you again real soon.